just leaving Tallahoe Station as it turns and we're heading to Gore. This is a great Western railway service to Didcot Parkway. Just arrived in Goring, got the train from um, Tilehurst after driving there today and uh, just looking for the signs for the Thames Park tickets over the bridge and uh, walking back to Tilehurst today with Dot, Dot had our first train journey today. This is Goring Mill, look at that, Whoa. So much power in that river. It's just this is the bridge I was on a minute ago, and it's just uh, Thames Park is here. That is a spectacular wooden bridge. Is it wooden? Is it? No, it's concrete. <laughs> how high the river is. Crikey, crikey, crikey. And here we are at Goring Lock and enjoying the River Thames. So I've been walking for about 20 minutes and the river is massive, massive. Um, I think we're just coming into another weir and I don't know if you can see, there's a, like a pillbox there. And these are situated along the Thames and were built in the 1940s because uh, the government thought that Hitler was going to come up the main archery of Great Britain, which is the Thames. So it's quite well camouflaged actually. There's a main road up there and this is the route I'm going. Now Dot's with me. Dot had her first train journey which is kind of cool. Okay, we're just saying goodbye to the Thames now, it's behind me, and we're going to go up through um, what's called the Goring Gap, which is uh, a chalk hill that's been worn through by the Thames in the Ice Age, and it's the only hill on the Thames footpath, so I think that's the way we're going. I'm just going to I think we're going up over there. So, uh, I don't suppose it'll be too challenging for me after doing staging twice this year and quite a bit of the southwest coastal path. Um, but nice to go up a hill for a change. So, as you can see, the path's moving upwards. Um, it's chalky, it's been really really muddy and uh, the river's very uh, very fast flowing and full. We've just come from up there so we're going up now into, up onto Goring Gap <clears throat> and uh, it's really peaceful. I haven't met anybody else walking today and uh, a little bit drizzly but not too bad. I'm wearing my bright orange um, raincoat. Give it a trial before I do the southwest coast path. And uh, yeah, it's all right so far. Just come across another pillbox um, on the side of the river. Um, remember earlier I said there's a few. God, that one's open. 
so I can explore. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go and explore. Back in a minute. Okay, I'm not going to explore, it's really steep, but I don't think I can get back up. <laughs> Just gonna carry on and stop getting distracted. So up on the hill now overlooking the river and you can just see through that tree um some more white sort of chalk cliffs. This is the path come down came up. And I think we're leveling off now, so that was quite pleasant. Reminded me a little bit of the walk um, coming back from uh, Lynmouth to Porlock um, with the trees sort of just perched on the side of the of the river of the bank in the path. Yeah, lovely old trees and uh, that's the path down. Uh, what's the better I end up on my backside? All the time you can hear the trains in the background. Um, oh, okay, I'm going down. Stopped at Whitchurch. Um, that's a little toll bridge we went over. Just had some lunch. It's very dirty. Barking at someone, and we're going that way. We've got past flooded. I've had to walk across the wood. Not sure how Dot's going to get across. Come on, Daddy. Come on, it's a good girl. Come on. This is a dog that doesn't like water. Come on, good girl. Come on then. Come on then. Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, did she do well? Yeah, bloody old footpath there. Just uh, came along this flock of geese, so we're quite noisy and boisterous. gone past Pangbourne. The thing about walking along the Thames Path is you don't always um, go into any of the local towns. The train track follows the River Thames all the way from Goring um, up to Tullhurst. I think I'm probably about three miles away from Tullhurst now. Um, we're just coming up to a place called Hardwick Park. Hardwick Park is um, one of the houses that Kenneth Graham lived in and he think, I think he had a disabled daughter or son and he used to tell them stories of the riverside animals and um, his, his child loved these stories and he wrote them down in short stories and then was asked to publish these stories and hence the wind in the willows so this is the area where he dreamt up these stories and thought about the animals um, toad, ratty and of course badger Okay, after deliberation and a lot of thought I think that's Hardwick Park, Hard Hardwick House um, it looks like a 
stately home type house and just walked up this way. I've met two people on the river today and there's some more up here so must be near some sort of civilization. Yeah, it's been lovely. This Maple Durham Lock. Apparently, there's a nice cafe here. I just want to finish that. I'm not going to stop for a coffee. Let's see what the cafe's like, though. I love these big weirs, they're just incredible. Just, hey, it's not open. Look, tea on the Thames. <laughs> not open. Ah. Oh. Well, there you go. Next time, maybe. Thirty-three miles to Oxford and seventy-eight and a half miles to London. That's kind of cool. 78 and a half miles to go then. 